Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to see how you can perform data preprocessing using Python programming language and its affiliate third party libraries. And uh, in this video, it's going to teach you much of how you can be able to prepare your data for training machine learning models, or even in the field of data science, how you can be able to easily understand what is contained in your data. And I believe that this is a skill that everybody must learn especially considering that today we are living in the world of big data and uh, skills such as data science are some of the best paying skills and thus if you want to join this area of data science or if you're already there and you want to sharpen your skills i believe this is the best video for you now there is a lot of data that exists in the world and this data could be in text format it could be in images could be in videos it could even be in csv file Today we are specifically going to focus on CSV. In future videos, we are going to focus on images, uh, videos, and even other multimedia files so that we can be able to train you on how you can join the field of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, more specifically machine learning, deep learning, data science, and so on. Today here, I have two data sets which are in form of a CSV file. I have obtained these data sets from Pago repository, and these are the Netflix stock data set as well as the Apple stock data set. You can go to Kaggle and download these data sets. Remember, if you don't want to practice with these data sets and you have data sets that are contained in a particular website, I developed a video on how to do web scrapping and I've uh, given the link to that particular video in the description below. I've as well attached this video up here. You can click on it and watch it so that you can obtain your data set from a website. It's a very requisite skill that everybody must know. Now, this data set is uh, about uh, Netflix stock. On this column A, we have the date, and you can see it starts from 2015 and goes all the way. Then we have the opening price, the highest price for that day, the lowest price for that day, the closing price, the adjusted, adjusted closing price, as well as the volume of stock traded. We have the same values for the upper, or rather, we have the same column titles for the upper data set. We can see the date, the closing price, the highest price, the lowest price, the opening price, the volume traded, as well as the adjacent closing price. Now we want to use uh, these two data sets to perform some basic preprocessing to it so that you can be able to see how data scientists understand data and how they are able to prepare their data to train machine learning models. So grab your favorite Python editor and let's go ahead. But before we begin, if you are here for the first time, please consider subscribing to this channel. Click on the notification bell so that you can be notified anytime we generate a new video, as well as like our video. And if you have any comments, please share them in the comment section below. We'll be certain to respond to your comments. Let's go ahead and uh, do this task. Since we are using Python, me, I'm using a uh, notebook, which is found in an Anaconda distribution environment. You could be using Pida. You could be using Google Colab. You could be using other Python editors. But what is most important is understanding the requirements of your editor. The reason as to why I prefer using either Jupyter Notebook or Google Colab Notebooks is because they are the ones that are industry standard and they are used by many scientists, whether in the industry or in the area of research. And therefore, when I create a video using uh, these notebooks, the video generally communicates to the general world where everybody can be able to do it. So we'll start by first importing the required libraries. For us to be able to preprocess data and data that is in form of a CSV file, we use a very critical library, which is known as Pandas. Pandas helps us in loading the data. It also helps us in understanding what is contained in that data. And since we say that an image is worth a thousand words, we are going to require another library known as matplotlib to visualize our data so that we can be able to understand our data from a visual perspective. So to start with, let us import these two libraries. Import pandas as pd. The reason as to why we are saying import it as pd is so that we can be able to use this variable named pd frequently in our uh, code. Then we import matplotlib as plt. And then we can define our style. There are various styles that exist in matplotlib. Today we are going to use BMH. You can also be able to use others. There are those who would prefer to use Sibon. 
But for purposes of um, uh, easy understanding of how uh, this preprocessing is working, let us just use the basic one, matplotlib. So we run our cell by pressing shift and enter. And uh, what it will do is that it will import all the requisite libraries. In some cases, if you have just in uh, installed your anacoda distribution environment, it's going to take some time before it does this. Then we start with the Netflix stock. Let us first see how it looks like in CSV. This is the Netflix stock. We have already seen it in CSV. You can see how it looks like. And now we want to process it. So what do we do? We first come here and load it. For us to be able to load it, we need to create something known as a data frame. A data frame is basically a subset of the Pardas library that stores data that has been loaded to a Python a programming language, and it stores it, it stores it and is able to manipulate that data even in future engagement. This data frame you can give it any name that you design, but for purposes of uh, proper understanding, I always advocate that you name your identifiers based on the task that they are doing. In this case, I have named mine df to start for data frame, nfx to start for Netflix. So we say df nfx is equal to pd, this is the object of this padders that we uh, imported here, dot read underscore csv is the method that is used to load a csv file. Now this is the name of my csv file, nflx underscore stock csv. You could be, uh, you could have given it any other name when you are saving it, but remember the rule of the thumb is that this file must be saved in the same folder where you have your Python notebook. If you are using Google Colab, it must be saved in Google Drive, or you could, once you have uh, ran your Google Colab, or you have started your Google Colab, you could just load it directly, and then you are able to have this particular file, that is nflx underscore stock .csv. Then we need now to see how the data looks like. So we can uh, first print out the first six rows, to print uh, the first six rows, we use a function known as header. So we come here and say dfnx, which is our data frame dot head, print the first. And inside this uh, head, we have inserted six, to mean that we want to print the first uh, six rows of the, of the data set. So if you press shift enter, it will print for you the first six rows. You can change this to something like 10 and see the first 10 rows, if that is what you desire. And you can be able to see your first 10 rows, starting from uh, row 0 all the way to row 9. Now, those who are wondering, why are you starting from uh, row 0? Remember, Padas is treating this data set like an array. And arrays, the indexing always starts from 0. That is something you should not forget as a program. After now looking at this data set, you can be able to see that what we have in CSV is what has been loaded here. We have the date, the open, the high, the low, the closing, and so on, and we add with volume. You can actually even verify if the volume that we have here is the same volume that we have in the CSV file, and you are going to see that it is actually the same. If you go to the Netflix CSV, and uh, you take the first volume over there, and you compare with what we have uh, here in our program, it is the same, which means that it has loaded the correct data set. Now, in CSV, we can be able to see that this data has so many uh, rows and it has a number of columns. So we need to understand how many exactly do we have? How many rows do we have? How many columns do we have? So let us uh, now define or let us get the shape of our data set. So we use this uh, uh, function known as shape and we just call it by uh, using our data frame and then dot shape to print out the shape of our data set. In this case, the shape of, the shape of our data set is 1007 comma 7, which means that it has 1007 rows, again is 7 columns. And those 7 columns, you can be able to verify them here. And uh, that gives us an understanding of how the data looks like, how much data are we dealing with. After that, we need to understand information in this particular data set. And this one helps us, especially if you are dealing with a, a data has a more rows than we have here, you like to understand what each row represents. So you use a function known as info. So you say your data frame or the name you have given it. In this case, I've given it dfnfx.info to print 
more details about the rules. So you can see more details have been printed and you can be able to tell much from this one. So for like for the first column, we have date. And date says that date has 1007 values, which is basically the number of rows that we have here. Remember, since this is a CSV file, the intersection of a row and a column, which we call a cell, is one that contains the values. So where if column has 107 entries, this column known as date has 1007 entries, that tells you that there are no null values in that particular data. And then it tells you the data type of that particular column. This is a date. If it's a date, then the data type is an object. The others, some of them have decimals, some of them don't have, and therefore they have been given float 64. So from this, we can easily tell that our data set doesn't have any null values. But if you want to check uh, further, or if you want to satisfy yourself that actually you do not have any null values, you can use a function known as is null.sum. So that tells you for each column, how many null values do you have? So if we run this cell here, it will tell us for the date column, we have zero null value. When you talk about a null value, we simply mean that there's a certain cell that is, doesn't have an entry. And these null values, you need to remove them or know how to treat them because they affect your data. And uh, if you are to train a machine learning model using these null values, it could affect what the model learns. And as part of pre-processing, treating null values is very critical. So from here, we can be able to tell that out of 1,007 rows or entries that we have in each of these columns, none of them has null values. All of them have returned zero entries in the null values. Now, having said so, now let us visualize our data and see how it looks like when we put it in visual form. Of course, an image is worth a thousand watts. So if we click Shift Enter and we run this cell, you can be able to see the visualization. Remember here, when we were importing matplotlib, we said that we want to use the BMH format. And this BMH format is the one that makes this particular uh, line that we have over here to be the way it is. It is the format that is used to represent stock values. So in this Cartesian plane, what do we have? On this axis, which is known as the Y axis, we have the closing price in dollars. And here we have the days. So let's understand the code that we have used to print this one. The first line here, which is plt.figure, is used to define the figure size. Then we have the figure type, which in this case I have called Netflix. You can edit it to something like maybe uh, Netflix stock. Then you have the days, which is the x-axis label. And you have uh, the y-axis label, plt.y label, which is the closing price in dollars. If your closing price is not in dollars, you can change this one to the currency that we're using. And if perhaps the data that you're dealing with is not using these values that I'm using here, you can change this to whatever you're using here. Then over here, we can see what you want to print. So we want in our data frame, which is DFN, a DFNFX, we want to print the closing price. And the closing price here has been given a name, uh, the column name is known as close. You can as well decide to print the low, you can decide to print the high or to visualize the high. You can also decide to visualize the volume, whatever you decide to visualize, uh, you just come and put the value of or the column name of what you want to visualize here. And then once you run it, you can see this visual uh, diagram that you have over here. And from this one, one can easily make a lot of uh, information out of it. One can easily tell that the stock was lowest at this moment here, and it was highest at this time here. And from this time, you can be able to tell that it has uh, been going downwards, upwards, and so on. And as of the last day of trade, this is where it was. So if you are to train a model to predict maybe more days from this one, you'd start from now here moving forward. That is the Netflix stock. Remember, we are dealing with two data sets. Let us now see how the Apple stock looks like. So we do the same. We first load the data. I have loaded the data, printed the first uh, six uh, entries or the first six rows. Let us get more information about the data. You can see still there are no null values. Let us get the shape of the data. This one has 1,000. 258 
rows again is seven columns just check if we have any null values none of the rows have any null values none of the cells have any null values let us now visualize this one we have visualized it and it seems that during that period apple stock towards the end was still performing very well as compared to the netflix stock and from this you can be able to create an impression of how the data is behaving by just visualizing it. But if you are to just look at it from the CSV file, it will not create as much sense as it is creating once you have visualized it. This is just the beginning. And now from this data set that you have over here, and from the preprocessing that we have done, just the basic one, you can be able to move ahead and train a machine learning model such as a linear regression, a decision tree, or even a random forest, and uh, even a neural network. However, for this one, since it's just a small data set, I will not advocate for a neural network because a neural network models require huge amount of data. They are data hungry. You can just train a basic classical machine learning model, such as a linear regression model, because we can be able to tell that the, uh, this data set that we have over here is in linear format. That from this data set, we can be able to plot in this Cartesian plane the x value against the y value, and you can even get a line of best fit. That, that then means that a linear regression model would be most ideal for predicting or for predicting stock for a given number of days. And therefore, this one would form the input of your linear regression model. In our subsequent video, we are going to show you how you can be able now to train a simple linear regression model as well as a decision tree to predict 200 days. And then you can be able to validate the same and even visualize the prediction. And I believe that with that, it will have helped you to gain some skills in data science using machine learning. Thank you so much for watching this video. Continue subscribing to the channel, like our videos, put your comments in the comment section below. And if you have specific data set that you'd like us to work with, you can also put it in the comment section below. We'll uh, work with it and we'll be able to demonstrate it for you. Click on the notification bell so that you are notified every time we release a new video. Thank you so much.